no one's immune to, which is bad shedding or rough or patchy shedding. I don't know how well you'll be able to see this on the video, but you can see like the wrinkles in the skin or the folds, which is a sign of dehydration. This guy was sent to us in this condition. Uh, now this uh, could, see that right there, he's got part of a cap on one of his eyes. Now this could uh, mean an underlying problem, um, several underlying problems. One is um, just bad husbandry, period. Uh, lack of nutrition, dehydration, but there is one thing that can actually cause all those symptoms to lead to this symptom, which is gastroenteritis. Uh, what is that? That is, um, it can be inherited from the parents. Um, it can come from what I like to refer to as closet breeders, uh, people that breed these in their closets. Uh, and the parents get no UVB light, no sunlight whatsoever. And I want to also make clear that these are not tropical animals. These animals are not always in hiding. So these guys are diurnal. So they're out in the morning, they're out at night, and they they are from West Africa. So sunlight is an important part of their regimen. In fact, if you if you want to see a wild one, a wild one should be about this color, almost a, almost a deep orange. If you were to go to West Africa right now and catch one in the wild, they're not supposed to be gray. So if you see a gray ball python, you know that that came from a closet breeder. These guys have to have UVB light. Uh, mites can also cause this, and, and nobody's immune to mites. Mites just appear. Uh, but I can tell now that I'm really feeling this guy that this is a parasite or gastroenteritis, or the parasite has led to the gastroenteritis because um, they suck all the energy, all the life, all the nutrition out of them, and then they can't, they can't shed properly. And they usually don't want to eat either. They just have a really bad belly ache. Um, when it's really severe, they won't be able to grip with their tail. You see how he's gripping around my finger, so it's not too bad. When it's really bad, the tail just sort of flops. Um, like a spaghetti noodle, I guess. So what I'm gonna do in the meantime, to give this guy some temporary relief now that I know exactly what it is, this is definitely, he's definitely constipated. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna get some liquid probiotics and hopefully he'll take a small uh, pinky and uh, I'm gonna put one drop of liquid probiotics on the pinky and that will help uh, begin the healing process because it's not too late when they can still grip like this. It's not too late. I also built them um, a bathhouse, uh, as I refer to it as, because um, you know we refer to it as a bathhouse as like a a hot, um, humid place to uh, you know, or a steam room or whatever you want to call it, and it helps uh, with our skin. So what I did was. I took this moss, it can be any sphagnum moss really, uh, but moss seems to hold the moisture the longest and the best. And I took one of these and um, just about two or three other companies make a variation of this one. Uh, I picked this one because the hole is not completely uh, vertical so the heat that's in here doesn't escape very easily. Some of them are just like right on top and the heat just rises right up. And then I made the moss like this and we already did this in a previous video which I'll leave a link to if you're not sure how to do it. It's so easy. It took me less than a minute to, to prep this moss. But I use hot water so this is warm right now. And then usually, let's see if I can get him to do it, but usually when you put them close to this for some odd reason they don't hesitate. They, they usually will go right in here. It's like they know what's best for them. But if they don't, they will eventually. Poor guy, I don't think he can actually see. Let me see. And, and also, you don't want to make it, you don't want to make it too tight in here on the top and the bottom because then they, they can't get in there, you know? It's too, it's too, uh, too tight. So you want to make it just, 
just right. Anyways, so there you go. If, uh, if, if you do have uh, problems with the, the shedding, it could be an underlying problem to a lot of things. If it's this severe, then it's usually something internal. But if it's just from the neck to the, to the nose, it's usually a lack of UVB light. Um, a lot of times you'd say, well, he sheds, but he doesn't shed the caps off his eyes all the time. And there's a big piece of skin that just stays right there. Build them one of these little huts and don't forget UVB light. They have to have it, period. It's, it's just not, it's not an option to not have that because there's no, there's no way that to properly digest, to properly grow. These guys come out in the morning in the, in the real world. And you can look this up on the internet, the Wikipedia, Encyclopedia, go to the library. These guys come out, they bask in the morning. They bask for two or three hours, they soak up the sun, they go back into hiding, usually in a termite mound. And then just before dark, they come back out, do it all over again, keep that heat through the night until the morning, until it lasts until the morning. Because without heat, they can't move, they can't digest food and so forth. So UVB is uh, very important, don't forget it. Anyways, there you go, that's it. So I kind of coaxed him into a, this little house and I came back to see if he came out and he did not. He seems to, seems to really like it. And so we'll give him a couple days in there and uh, that skin should come right off of there. So he's happy, that's good.